What is video, you ask? Well, the word video is derived from Latin, meaning I see. Technically speaking, video is simply pictures of the world gone through at certain speeds, resulting in a moving image. The moving images we see are due to what is called beta movement. First described around 1912, it is an optical illusion where fixed images seem to move. The illusion is caused by the fact that the human optic nerve responds to changes in light at about 10 cycles per second. So changes around double this rate are registered as motion instead of being separate, distinct images. Take this short animation, for example. What we perceive is six seconds of a ship taking flight. However, what is actually being displayed is 144 images in rapid succession. Let's break this down and take a look at what our brain is actually seeing. These 24 images make up just one second of the animation. Notice in some frames there is only slight variation, while in others the variation is much larger. Yet, our brain still perceives this as fluid motion. Now that we know what video is, let's take a look at its history. Video technology was first developed for the CRT, or cathode ray tube, television systems. But several new technologies for video display devices have since been invented. In 1951, the first videotape recorder captured live images from television cameras by converting the camera's electrical impulses and saving that information onto magnetic tapes. Video recorders sold for $50,000 in 1956, and videotape cost $300 per one hour reel. However, prices steadily dropped over the years due to the invention of the video cassette recorder, then DVD, and eventually Blu-ray. Video has a frame rate, or FPS, which is the number of pictures being displayed each second. This can range from 6 to 8 frames per second to over 120 frames per second depending on the medium. However, a minimum of around 15 frames per second is needed to achieve convincing motion. A normal television program is broadcast at 29.97 FPS, while most movies and the video you're watching now have a frame rate of 24 FPS. A few modern movies are being shown at 60 frames per second, and some high-end sporting events are being broadcast as high as 120 frames per second. However, it is worth noting that these higher frame rates can cause headaches if motion blur is not properly added to the still images. Now, let's take a look at the evolution of television over the years. Once electricity was able to be controlled more efficiently with inventions from Edison, Stanley, and Tesla, human ingenuity took off, rising to new levels. After Edison perfected the light bulb, the pivotal piece of equipment for television, the vacuum tube, was invented by John Ambrose Fleming. Television came into being based on the inventions and discoveries of many men and scientists. The first generation of television sets were not entirely electronic. The display, or TV screen, had a small motor with a spinning disc and a neon lamp both of which worked together to give a blurry reddish-orange picture that was only about half the size of a business card. The first public television demonstration happened in 1927, when a speech delivered by Herbert Hoover was transmitted from Washington to New York. It was viewed on a 2-inch by 3-inch screen. Basically, you could watch images move on a screen no bigger than today's cell phones. RCA was responsible for the mass marketing and production of many of the first televisions. In 1939, a new set cost $600, got five channels in addition to radio transmissions. The screen was a 12-inch round cathode ray tube. It was not until after World War II that the television production really started taking off. This was due to the fact that most manufacturers were still concentrating on the war effort. Other companies, such as Farnsworth, 
General Electric, Emerson, Motorola, and Zenith started getting in on the action of producing televisions. By 1950, the number of televisions in households reached over 10 million, compared to just 190,000 in 1948. Once the war was over, Americans settled down and began to indulge in more and more television programs. Color sets and cable TV. Television finally got colorized in 1964. Even so, sales of color sets didn't overtake those of their black and white counterparts until 72 and 73, when collectively over 10 million color sets were sold. The early 1970s saw the number of households with color TVs rise to over 50%. Further advances of the 60s included the invention of cable television. Granted, the earliest cable systems were, in effect, no more than strategically placed antennas with very long cables connecting them to subscribers' television sets. Strangely enough, even by 1999, only 68% of households had cable television. HDTV Now, flat panel televisions that are lightweight and provide high definition dominate the market. In fact, I don't think you could find a CRT television in any big box electronic store. Now, we can even watch high definition television on our mobile phones on a screen no bigger than the first mechanical television of 1927. Luckily for us, you can hold a smartphone in your hand, unlike the huge box that the first television sat in. The reason HDTV works so well with its crisp picture and sound is because the transmission is in digital formats instead of analog. Data is sent and received in packets of digital information. LCD, plasma, and LED televisions interpret the information and turn the transmission into pixels that are then displayed on our TV. The future and beyond. Now that 3D TV is upon us, what is the next step? One theory is that holograms are the next logical step that can bring a television show directly into your living room. Imagine watching Monday Night Football and standing in the middle of the huddle. Or watching your favorite sci-fi show and sitting in the passenger seat of the spaceship. Scientists are currently working on holographic televisions in Finland as part of a three-year study. Don't expect them in your house anytime soon. It took HD over 10 years to get off the ground. So, it will probably be around 15 to 20 years before we'll see vastly different television experiences.